all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody. Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby, and it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks. Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 
3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis. All right, folks, back in the Boss Man Show. Here with my bro, Donnie Tindall, new coach of Chipotle Indians, Juco School down in Florida. Coach, bro, how you feeling, man? I'm good, boss, man. I'm doing well. As uh, as you know, anytime you take a job over, you're ripping and running and trying to put a team together. We only have two returning players, so it's been nonstop in regard to recruiting and getting out in the community as much as we can, trying to meet some people, and uh, it's been great. It really has. This is a great situation, a great job, and I'm certainly blessed and feel fortunate for the opportunity. How does it feel to be back in the ranks of in college where you're comfortable at? Because I know you was in the NBA for the last few years and with the Raptors and the Pistons, and now you're back in your element in co- coaching college ball. So how does it feel to be back in your, in your element after what happened to you years ago? Well, I tell you, it's exciting. I, I really grew to enjoy the pro game, as you and I have talked about several times. I learned a great deal as a coach, and I feel like I grew through the entire entire process, both from – what happened at Tennessee to being in the G League and get some NBA experience. All that has made me a better coach, and I'm excited to be back in college because I not, not that the pro situation you can't impact or influence young people's lives, but at this level you truly do impact a young person's live, life, and you can kind of shape and mold and mentor them uh, to help them as they, as they become grown men. Most definitely, because I see most of the guys at that level are – they think they're the guy already. They feel like they're trying to accomplish and make some money. So it's really a business at that point, right? It's the, so this is not so much of maybe the mold a guy wins about business. I want to get me some coins, right? So I, I can say having the guys coming to you at the college level, you can mold the young men, meet them as a high schooler, and mold them from that and build a relationship with them that you a true bond with these guys, not just a, hey, you're my coach for now. Help him help me, make me make, make some more money. So I think it's good for you to be back in, in your element, man. Yeah, it is, and I and I think what you just said is tr- so true. You know, the NBA guys probably get a bad rap from the casual fan that they don't work hard or they don't want to be coached. That's not it. They they work extremely hard, and they do want to be coached. But at the end of the day, it's going to always be about them bettering themselves, getting a better contract, a better opportunity. And, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But most of these guys are grown men. They've already been molded or mentored or shaped into who they are and and what type of person they are. And and so you don't have as much of an impact on that side of their life as you you do at this level. So it's give and take. There's certainly some advantages uh, of dealing with a more mature guy, and and it's nothing but basketball. There's no off-the-floor issues or, or things that you're dealing with in regard to going to class or missing a tutoring appointment, et cetera. Um, but you also don't have that chance or that opportunity to, to really, um, you know, be a major impact in their life as a person or as a father figure or as a big brother, however you want to word that. Most definitely. And, Coach, I know you said you had down to two guys on the roster returning. So what kind of guys are you targeting for this upcoming season for, for at Chipotle? Because it's one of the most – it's one of the best JUCO jobs in America, first first, first and foremost. And so kind of describe to us the job is in general and what and the kind of guys that you want to actually bring into your program down there. Well, it's a great it, – first of all, just as you said, it's a great junior college situation. When you look at Chipotle College, they have four sports here, men's – uh, basketball, women's basketball, baseball, and softball. And in the last 15 years, baseball has won three national titles. Softball has won two national titles. Women's basketball has won a national title. And Chipola hasn't won a national championship, but they've been right there with great teams for many, many years. And so it's a great situation. They're committed to winning. They have a president in Dr. Clemens and an athletic director in Jeff Johnson who have a great vision for what they want Chipola basketball to be. 
and I'm excited about that. I think what a lot of people don't understand is how good the players are in this league. Uh, it's a great league. The Panhandle Conference is the toughest junior college conference in the country. You got Northwest Florida. You've got Pensacola. You got Tallahassee. Uh, ourselves. I mean, it, uh, Gulf Coast has a great coach and program there. So it's it's a very very competitive league. And to give you an example, there's a kid in our league that just committed about a week ago to University of Louisville. So it gives you an idea of the type of players you have to have to be competitive at this level. Uh, very good, talented guys that have to be at least Division One caliber or you're not going to give yourself a chance to win. Most definitely. And, and so, including a JUCO guy, Coach, uh, you know, is it more of a, like a – a good lower major guy kind of level for what level you need in, in JUCO level, or it's kind of a, I know you can't get the, 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 the high, the high major guys, of course, it to come JUCO, but more like a more borderline, you know, mid major conference and below kind of guy who's kind of guys you're targeting now for the JUCO thing more so than you would if you was a Southern Miss or Morehead State. Yeah, I think it's probably, uh, you know, the level of the Moorhead State and the Southern Miss type guy for the most part. But, you know, as I just mentioned, you're going to have a guy or two from each team that signed in a Power 5 conference. You know, like I just said, the kid committed to Louisville. I think we'll have a couple guys in our program that are going to be uh, recruitable in Power 5 leagues. So uh, I think you've got to have at least OVC, Sunbelt Conference, USA type players to win in this league. And if you do, if you are fortunate to get a, a power five guy or two, then obviously that's going to put you ahead of the curve. But there are several guys like that in our league, so you've got to have a couple of those guys running around. Most definitely, and and, and some you learned a great deal about in every one of your jobs is playing player development. Because I've, every, everywhere you've been at, you develop high level level talent that's played in the, in the pros today. And you know, even with the G League team, your team improved. Daily, you was around the Raptors and had a big on player development. So, so let's talk about how your background and player, player development coach and how it's going to help these young men at the Juco level get to a Power Five school come their junior year once they spend two years with you, learning from you and your in your program. Yeah, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is, and we even did it in the in the G League, boss man, is how we practice every day, the work ha- habits that we're going to form from day one the culture that we're going to have, the expectations that are going to be demanded. It's going to be something that prepares these guys for the Division One level. I think when you look across my background from Kenneth Reed at Moorhead State to Josh Richardson moving in the point guard position at Tennessee, those guys were basically on nobody's NBA radar until later on in their career. And then they exploded and, and had great careers under me, Kenneth, all four years, Josh's senior year. And then we go to G League, and you've got Fred Van Vliet and, and Pascal Siakam that were rookies on our G League championship team and part of being part of their development. And then, obviously, this past year with a guy like Dante Hall, getting him two 10-day call-ups, helping Jordan Bone continue to grow and evolve as a player. So we've had a lot of experience in developing and growing players, and I think the biggest selling point – that we can make is look there's examples of guys we put to into the next level or help them grow to get to the next level and coaches across the country are going to respect our staff and myself for for preparing and demanding the the, the same things they're going to expect and have as demands at the division one level so i think That'll be a big selling point for us in recruiting. And then I think once we start playing and guys are in here watching our guys practice and compete every day, uh, that'll be a huge advantage for our guys in their recruitment. Most definitely, because i tell you what, the key thing about it, a guy can know that, hey, my coach can't prepare me for my future, especially at that level, Juco level, of course, because yeah, they want to get a D1 scholarship, of course. And like you said, your, ped- your pedigree is one of a kind. And you've like I said, you've developed for years, coach, and you're big on relationships, and you're a guy you, you can trust you. Like a lot of coaches out here, a lot of their players, you're real with your players. So I find that's another point, too, the fact that you're real. You don't sugarcoat nothing. You tell them how it is. And you're going to tell them how to do it the right way. You want to help them as much as you can, but if they don't want your help, it's on them. God help them. Yeah, you know, I mean, and I think that's the only way you can have a relationship with people is to be honest. I mean, if you can't 
tell a kid what he needs to improve in or what he has to do better uh, and them not, you know, be offended or, or hide or cower away from that, then, then you really can't help the guy. Uh, and in the flip side, if I'm, you know, BSing them and not telling them the truth and, and just trying to get them to the floor and not make them better or hold them accountable, then I'm doing them a disservice. So it's a two-way street. You know, guys have to want to be coached and guys have to want to be developed and pushed. And then it's my job to do those things and hold them accountable. And, you know, that was one thing you and I talked about off the air many times is I wasn't sure if I could do that at the NBA level with those G league players and some NBA guys that we would have at times during the season. But I was pleasantly surprised. We were, I was very, very direct, straightforward with those guys. They never wavered from who I am as a coach or or what my personality is. And, and those guys embraced it. They did because they knew at the heart of my teaching and at the heart of my lessons, I was trying to give them it was for their betterment and I think it'll be the same thing here these guys are going to understand it's not easy and yes I'm going to hurt their feelings at times with tough love but it's all going to be to help them grow and develop and ultimately reach their goals and dreams and one thing about coach I watched your team most nights on, on, on the on the stream on, on the G League stream and your guys played hard for you even in timeouts they pay attention to you those guys never checked check out on you. They you you, they, you was coaching them hard. You was giving them some give the business sometimes, but they always gave you respect. And I, I could tell that about your team. So I can, like you see, you know, your, your tough love is only with the one goal in mind, helping those guys improve. And if, if they know that about you, like I know that about you, those guys are supposed to got a guy who have a blessing of a coach and a person to have in their corner. Well, I appreciate, you know, and, and, and you saying that because, again, I, I wasn't positive going into the G League season if, if my guys would respond the way they did, but they were fantastic. I had a, a great group. Our general manager, John Phelps, put together a nice roster, and, and we worked hand-in-hand hand with that, and, and they were guys that were coachable. They were tough. They wanted discipline. They wanted to be held accountable, and that's not always easy. But to their credit, they did exactly that. And you're right. So many times in huddles at, at different levels, you, the coach is talking or drawing something up, and guys aren't looking at them or, or they're daydreaming or looking at the crowd. And, and my guys, they were. You're exactly right. They were locked in. They were focused. And, uh, and I appreciate that. And I think it will be the same way here guys continue to grow and develop and improve every day and, and appreciate us for how hard we push them and coach how how has the community treated you so far in mariana down there do you new guy in town i know you a lot of people, a lot of people want to see you but now with COVID 19 you can't get too close to too many people right now but how is community treating you right now how are you enjoying the panhandle life so far well i tell you what people have went out of their way to, to welcome us my staff and i and my folks have came in for a couple of weeks trying to help me get organized and you know, you go in a restaurant, people are coming up introducing themselves and excited you're here in Mariana. And it's just, it's a really cool, small college town, a lot like when I was at Moorhead. I call it a common ear community where people just want to have a little bit of ownership in the program in a good way. They want to spend some time with you. They want to get to know you. They're going to want to want to get to know our players. And, and that's exciting to me because I, you know, I'm a uh, people friendly person I like to meet people and get to know them and and spend some time with them and I think when you do that then they're more apt to come out and support your team and and rally behind what you're doing Modella coach I'm happy for you I'm glad you're back in your element bro I really appreciate your friendship first and foremost and your time as always and I'll be looking at, at you Cole, for scores now <laughs> this is first, first in my career but since you're down there man I'll be paying attention more to Juco the Juco game now going forward for sure well I appreciate it man as we talked about uh, I got a four bedroom house so you come stay at my crib and We'll watch some ball, go grab some seafood at night, and maybe even go over the beach. Panama City's only 45 minutes away, so come on, man. Love to have you. Hey, Coach, soon as Florida cases come down a little bit, Coach, I'll be down that way to see you, man. (laughs) (laughs) Soon as he calms down, I'll be that way, bro. I love it, buddy. All right, man. I appreciate you, boss, man. Anytime, bro. Thanks again. Always, brother. I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you, buddy. Yes, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now. It's Donnie Tindall. I'm the boss man. 
for all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student-athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grinding NC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody. Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh. Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby, and it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down. It clicks. Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 
3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis. Folks, we're on the Boss Man Show. Special guest is John Wilcom. He has a book out, Walk On Warrior, Drive Discipline and the Will to Win. John, how's everything going with you guys and you and your family, man? Hey, it's going good, JR. I'm uh, excited to talk to you. I love talking basketball, and um, I really enjoyed uh, following your show. And as we talked about kind of pre-show, just the, uh, the love you show to kind of mid-major college coaches and um, the awareness that you bring to those programs I think is awesome. And um, so much parity in college basketball. You know, if you're not paying attention to uh, – to some of these mid-major schools, I think you're really missing something. You got there right now. I say that, man. Like so many coaches, man, are, are good out here, man. They just need a platform to talk about their programs and what they're doing. Because if you're not in the Power Five conferences or all those group of five conferences, that people don't really, never really notice you. But there's a lot of great coaches in the Big Sky, the, the Sun Belt, the Southland Conference, SoCon. You know, there's so many good coaches, the Big South as well. It's uh, so many good coaches out here, John, that don't get the run they deserve because it's not on the national radar. I feel like, hey, we're in here in Atlanta, number nine me, me, me market in, in, in the country, AAU, AAU capital of the world with Peace Jam, Lakes Point and all that so we have going in here in Atlanta. Hey, why, why not get these guys a platform, man. For sure. Yeah, I mean, there's there's more exposure events up there for high school kids than ever before, and I think part of that, too, is kids have different expectations, you know, now than, than maybe they did 10, 15 years ago, um, where everybody wants to go to a high major school, and um, there are so many great opportunities out there, and to your point, you can find the right coach, the right fit, you know, a system where you're going get, to get playing time, be able to earn playing time, um, and also just be able to develop, you know, this, I think one thing that you know, I talked about in the book and experience as a, as a basketball player, as a coach, um, really my whole life around the game, it takes time, you know, and it, it takes time from both a physical and a mental standpoint to, to really learn the game. And, you know, the older you get, the more the details matter. Um, and that's one thing I talked about, you know, I played at Marquette, played for, for coach Tom Crean. And Kareem was uh, such a – such a um, he cared about the details. And so, you know, while we could go out and, you know, shoot a 1,000 jump shots a day and spend hours doing different drills, you know, at the end of the day, um, fine-tuning your footwork, watching films, not film not only just about you as an individual, but um, how the team would play together. Um, and there's so many intricacies in basketball that I feel like coaches have picked up on now. And, um, yeah, if, you, if you're around a big coach, um, there's so much you can learn, you know, over a three- or four-year period. Most definitely, John. And just talk to us about this, John. What was the event or events that triggered you to write this book, uh, Walk on Warrior? Because I know I read in some research that, you, 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 you first of all, you, you kind of want to share stories with your, your kids. And then you just want to say, thought might be good for everybody to hear. So, what maybe tr- triggered you to say, hey, let me write this book about my experience as, as, as a walk-on warrior, my journey from Marshfield to Marquette? Yeah, so I'm like probably hundreds of thousands of other kids out there. Where I was I was a really good high school player. I had, you know, D2 offers. And I actually went and played Division II basketball my freshman year. Um, had a good season, but I, I was just – I wasn't at the right school um, – I was kind of in the middle of nowhere. I just didn't feel like it was a good fit for my personality. And so I wanted to go to a bigger school. I wanted to be in a, in a more urban environment. I wanted to be in the city. Um, so my plan was to, to transfer to Marquette. Um, and Marquette was a school to me that – Marquette was the school I followed as a kid. And I feel like a lot of that has kind of gone by the wayside as well where, you know, people are getting recruited and um, – at the end of the day, a lot of these kids, they don't really follow a particular school. So um, you, there's really no allegiance there. Versus for me, Marquette was always a dream school. I and mean, if, if I could get in there, you know, be on campus, 
go to games. Um, I actually wrote Kareem a letter and just said, I want to I wanna be a part of the program in any way possible. And he said, you know, if you come work some summer camps for me, um, we'll get you down here. Uh, maybe you can play at some scrimmages and stuff with the guys. Just come and be a part of like, what we're building. So I said, that's, that's great. So I was able to get into school there. I transferred after my freshman year. And my plan was just to be a student like everybody else. And, and that was hard for me because I obviously had played basketball my whole life, played at a high level. Um, but, you know, I was, I was going to hopefully be a, be a manager, be able to help the team in some way. Um, and then over that summer, you know, I ended up playing pickup ball with, with a lot of the guys um, in the evenings. Um, and one night, you know, one of the assistant coaches came up to me, Brian Wardle, who's now, uh, now the head coach at Bradley. And he just said, you know, we want you to walk on. We want you to be a part of the team. Um, and you basically have the next month and a half uh, to get yourself in the best shape of your life and to come back here ready to compete in the fall. Um, so at that point, you know, summer camps wrapped up in mid-July. I went home for the next probably 45 days and, and just got after it, you know, and I, I worked as hard as I could, uh, strength, conditioning, and running, and, and spending time in the gym, even if it was by myself. Um, and I came back, you know, ready to compete in the fall and, um, you know, at that point, I was I was a part of the team like everybody else. And so I think that whether you're on scholarship or not, um, you you compete and you get after it. And one of the things that I was admired about Coach Cream was that he brought me into his office and he basically said that, that I'm going to coach you like I'm going to coach everybody else. And, you know, if, if you don't want that, then, then let me know that. But, um, you know, you're, you're a part of this roster and you're going to make an impact here, and you're going to make our team better. Um, and so I loved hearing that. I loved the fact that, you know, from the get-go, there was an expectation that, that I was going to be be a part of building something. Um, and that's that's kind of how I got started at Marquette. Most definitely. Let's, 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 go, let's, go, let's go back to your childhood. Uh, growing up in Marshfield, Wisconsin, what was your life like, and how did that shape you to be the person you are today, John? Yeah, I grew up in a family of four kids. Um, three of us were a year apart. And so, um, you know, we were definitely very competitive with each other. I feel like played a lot of basketball outside, you know, I, um, and, and my, my dad coached, coached youth basketball. He actually coached girls, girls like junior high basketball. And so from a you know young age, probably first grade on up, um, I would just go and you know, watch these practices. And I always thought to myself, like, Man, you know these, these girls are terrible at basketball, um, and so that just gave me an opportunity to be be in the gym. Um, you know, see see, I guess just the way that my dad coached, and I kind of just developed a love love for the game. I should also mention uh, my my grandpa on my mom's side um, had been a high school coach at, at, a, at a high school in Wisconsin. And, um, just kind of had that same attitude where he just he loved being around the game. And I'll never forget, like, he'd come to our house and uh, while everyone else is just sitting around talking about family stuff, you know, this guy's watching random games on ESPN and, you know, would tell me about different coaches and players and just had a keen interest in things where I'd, I'm like, why do you care about this, you know? So I think uh, from from that day on, I just, I love being around the game. You know, the great thing is, is, is you can all play a lot of sports and participate, um, but if you look, in, you look yourself in the mirror at a certain point, you kind of just, uh, you know what you love. And uh, it makes it so much easier to put put your heart and soul into something when you love what you're doing. Most definitely. I can definitely dig that, man. I can definitely dig that for sure. And, you know, I feel like that gave you your, like, your, the foundation to just move on and say, hey, Minnesota Crooks, this that's not for me. I'm gonna go to Marquette, where I know how, where I really want to be at, and I'm gonna prove these guys. I can be part of his roster, and you, you was a this guy was gonna become a walker. So tell us that process, that month and a half you had to get ready. What all was the process of becoming an official walk on at Marquette at a D1 school like that? Yeah, so um, it's it's brutal, man. Just from a from a physical standpoint, I think I. I put myself through through probably five to seven hours a day for those 45 days of different types of workouts. 
um, I felt like I was in great physical shape. And often that was in, you know, 95, humid heat, you know, was running a lot of hills. Um, I, just, I wanted to be at a point where I could, you know, physically compete against guys that were, were bigger and stronger and faster than I was. Um, and so I, you know, physically I just, I put it all, put it all in there. But I think being around a college strength conditioning staff, you know, we lifted a lot of weights. We did a lot of conditioning when I was playing division two basketball and I'm not discrediting anything that happened there, but division one's a whole other story. Um, you know, you're, you're doing stuff early in the mornings. Um, you know, you're, you're lifting oftentimes after, you know, long grueling practices where your, your body's just kind of shot. And the mentality is like you're, you're growing and, and trying to make gains every day. And I think, uh, you know, one of Tom Crean's kind of famous sayings is just every day you get better, you get worse. You never stay the same. And I think that that type of mentality was, was something that we all just kind of kept in the back of our heads when you know, you'd often be up at 5.30 in the morning for, for a strength session, and then we'd go to class from 8 to noon, and you'd you maybe squeeze in a quick lunch, practice all afternoon. Um, you might do some more lifting, go to dinner, you go to study hall, you come back, you watch some film. Um, you know, you might go to bed at 10 o'clock and have to do it all over again. And that's, that's every day. And so I think that, um, you know, the respect I have for guys that play, I shouldn't say guys, you know, men, women, anybody that plays college sport at that level uh, is tremendous because, you know, you and I and so many people work what we consider as a full-time job. Um, you know, that's like a, that's like a double full-time job. Most definitely. You most definitely, because like you, like you said, they're always doing have some activity for you all day long. Like you, your days are allocated always, and some some days the guy. I know some guys told me that they they feel better on game days because it's like the game day is an off day for them almost because the the non game days are just like quote unquote suffering per se. So you described it how I've been told it to be. Yeah, and I think that, uh, that that's the key part is just you have to keep your perspective. You have to have kind of goals for yourself in mind of, you know, what am I ultimately trying to be? And for, you know, a lot of guys at that level, um, you're trying to be a professional basketball player. And I think that, you know, it's it's worth putting in the time. And, and today, you know, there's leagues all over the world. So, you know, most of those guys aren't thinking about, am I one of the 450 best players that are going to play in the NBA it's like, you know, with the, with the G League, with all the leagues overseas, um, you, can be a, you can be a decent Division One basketball player in the U.S. and still make a pretty nice living, you know, playing basketball for the next 10, 15 years if you want to do that. So I think um, a lot of those opportunities have kind of expanded that mindset of just, you know, I'm not just, you know, putting in all this time and effort and kind of physically, you know, controlling myself for nothing. Um you know, I'm, I'm developing myself so that I can make a living off the game, you know, when I'm done. And I think, you know, for me, I never thought I was good enough to play professionally. Um, but I always thought that in the back of my mind, there's got to be some way for me to stay connected to the game. And whether that's, you know, coaching, coaching youth, whether that was writing a book, um, being on podcasts with guys like yourself that just love the game. I think there's always there's always a place and you know when you're 18 19 20 years old you don't always have that perspective it's hard to kind of think about you know what's what's next um but you also have a lot more endless energy there too and you might not question it as, it as much as if you were uh if you were an older player most definitely and i feel like you know i like you said like i saw you one of your tweets about guys declaring for the nba draft and like you gotta be realistic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, throw, I'm gonna throw name in the hat. Throw name in the hat. Like, are you really gonna be drafted, or can you be signed as an undrafted free agent, or can you even make it in the G League? You know, like I'm not throwing any shade, but I'm seeing some guys in the OVC who are not John Morant throwing that name when it's declaring for the draft. I'm like, in what world? You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, you gotta yeah, be realistic about yourself and your talents, and like you said, you was realistic about what who you were. As you say, you knew you probably couldn't play professionally, but you knew you still contribute to the game, whether it be coaching or something. But some guys don't have that perspective yet to say, "Hey, this isn't who I am now, 
it's some people I can pop down the road, but they just say, hey, I'm going to throw my name ahead and this is what happens. For, for sure. And I, and I think sometimes they do that, and the rules have changed now where you can kind of go through the draft process. You can, you can get a grade from scouts. You can go back to school, which is a really good thing. But back when I played, you know, if you, if you declared, you, you were kind of done with school. And, you know, there were hundreds of guys that all of a sudden didn't get drafted, had limited professional options, and were kind of, well, here I am now. I'm, I'm 20 years old. I'm still still kind of a kid. You know, what do I do? Um, and so I think that, you know, you have to have good people around you, and hopefully uh, the coaches that are around you, whether it's head coach or assistant coaches or, um, you know, your family, people just can kind of kind of set your mind straight, give you some perspective. Because um, that's, that's the other thing I think, so when I wrote this book, you know, I started writing this when I was when I was 18 years old, um, and so it, it was funny because I, I put the book off for years. And to your point, I thought, you know, if I ever finish this thing, I'll give it to my kids, and that'll be that. And you know, hopefully, they'll read about their dad when they're older. And and it was just a, it was good memories for me. Um, but when I when I kind of rededicated myself to finishing it. Um, you know, I was 31, 32 years old, so I was, I was had a much different perspective, and it was kind of fun for me actually just reading back through all these things that I wrote, because you, know, you look at things a lot differently when you're 18 versus when you're 30, 31. Most definitely. Um, so the, the tone of the book, there's definitely, uh, you can you can tell uh, kind of some of the parts I think that were written at different times in my life. Um, just, just based on my mentality. Now, John, how does it feel having a book that has the ability to touch people and tell a story from all walks of life where they can, they can get your, your, your mentality of perseverance, integrity, hunger, drive, desire, and get, and get those messages from your book, and it affects anybody from all walks of life. No matter, what, no matter who you are, where you're from, rural, urban, you, you can read this book and get those principles out of it and apply it to your life. And I think that's a great thing that your book can touch all people, not just some people, but everybody, but, you, but doing it through the lens of basketball. Yeah, honestly, that's, that's why I finally decided when I was done with it to, to, to make it a real book and to put it out there. And, and that, that takes some, there was some fear there too, because it's like, well, this is my life. Who really cares about my story or, or the way it went down, you know, for me. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, there's kids in every city in America that probably had a lot of the same thoughts that I did, which was just like, you know, I'm in seventh, eighth, ninth grade. What's it like in that locker room? What's it like to, to go through those practices, to go through those strength and conditioning workouts? Um, you know, what, what kind of gear do you get? You know, um, what does study hall look like? How much film do you actually watch? And like, what, what did it take for you to get from, from where you were, um, to that level? And I thought, man, if, if I don't share this with people, maybe if they don't like it, that's fine. But to your point, I just think that there were a lot of people that, um, that I didn't know that I thought, deep down could probably benefit from something like that. And the the fun part for me has just been the feedback I've gotten from people, um, from from kids, from parents, from, like you said, there's people from all walks of life, from people even outside the United States that are like, you know, this book inspired me in, in some way, or there's parts of this that I can relate to, and, you know, I was I was kind of struggling with, with X, Y, Z. So... I'm just I'm pumped that I could you know make even a small impact on people and um, you know it, it's definitely something that I'm proud proud to have put out there. And and John, let's talk about this. Um, the doors those open up for you by being in market for that one. You like the Milwaukee Bucks, you know, and your Wisconsin Playmakers AAU program that you have. So let's talk, talk about those programs and how being there that one, you open up doors for you that you never thought you could even imagine having open for you just by deciding it, to make it, that move and say, hey, I'm going to do this and get this done and show people it can be done. Yeah, I mean, I, I worked for the Milwaukee Bucks in public relations back in it's 2007. Um, you know, I, I helped 
people like yourself, you know, media personnel set up for games, help, you know, TV and radio broadcasters get ready for, for home games. Um, and, and again, I don't think I would have, wouldn't have gotten that job, you know, had I have not been around basketball as much as I had been. And, um, but that was a, that was an unbelievable job for me because I would sit there and I'd be watching the games thinking, sure, I'm, I'm here for a job, but I, I'm actually getting paid to watch 40, you know, 41 NBA home games. I mean, how cool is that? And so the fact that I can brush up against people in the media room and, you know, as a young person and just pick, pick at broadcasters' brains and say, how did you get to where you, where you got to? I think a lot of the things that you, you battle with in, in sports as a player, um, man, all that stuff translates, you know? You've got to be able to put yourself out there. You've got to have confidence in your abilities. At the same time, you've got to be humble enough to say, you know, I'm not the best at my job. I'm not the best, you know, player on this team. Um, you know, how do I get a little bit better every day? Um, and so that's kind of the mentality that I, that I have when I work for the Bucks. And um, the same thing was with, this, with uh, Wisconsin Playmakers, which, which was just how do, how do I start some camps, you know, myself? How do I start an AAU program that gives, you know, kids in a similar situation – opportunities to go out and compete against better players and to get some exposure and hopefully, you know, make a better life, um, you know, out of it by those opportunities. So my mentality the whole time has just been um, put yourself out there. You can't be afraid to fail. And, and you'd be surprised. The older I get, the more I, I just, I love when younger people reach out to me and just ask for advice or, you know, tell me about how you did this. Um, because I think I think more more and more people would love to actually be able to mentor people, you know, that are younger. Um, they just don't know where to start. Most definitely, like see, like John, I'm 33 years old. You're 36 years old, so we both in the same age bracket. So I feel like we're blessings to hey, Alberton Radio 2012, and you've been playing ball your whole life, but we've been able to use both of our talents and skills to inspire and help others. And I think that's a great thing for us because a lot of people sleep on us millennials to a degree. Like, we, don't, we don't know what we're doing, but we do all, we do have potential and we do, we are doing for our community and helping people in multiple ways, whether it be me with radio, you about, about basketball and your love of the game and want to help others. So I feel like guys like you and me are key to helping our nation heal, of course, and become better and become more as one with our, our, both our stories to help people grow and become better people. I, I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think um, sports and basketball and coaches, I mean, so many coaches take on that responsibility and you hear it all the time and, you know, it's, it's politically correct to say, hey, we're, we're, we're helping raise, you know, good, strong young men. Um, but a lot of coaches actually believe that, you know, and I, I give those guys so much credit because, you um, there's so many things you learn, you know, being a part of a team. Um, that that's really just realistic for what's going to happen when you're not not playing basketball anymore. In terms of like, you know, how you treat people, um, you know, the respect that you have, you know, for people that are older and more experienced than you, um, and just the ability to to persevere. I mean, I, I I think one one thing that we used to do is drill at Marquette that was uh, full court one on one up to seven by ones. And, you know, if you got behind, the loser would have to run a bunch of sprints. So, I mean, if you were down six to three, you could see the guys that would, well, would start to quit. And they'd almost like save their energy because they knew like, I'm going to lose. I want to save my energy so I can run these sprints and like finish them, you know, under a time limit. But when we started to get older, um, your mentality would change where, you knew the guys that were just that were disciplined and that were just ballers because they would go they they would go as hard as they possibly could uh, till it was absolutely over and then even then they wouldn't complain about the sprints they would just handle their business and move on to the next drill um, and I think that was an important thing that, that I learned and you know as a as an 18 year old um, versus when you've been in the program for a bit. Most definitely. I, I know uh, I read a review from Coach Rick Majerus. Talk about him and what, and what Coach Majerus meant to you in your life personally. Yeah, you know what's crazy is uh, I I got an internship one summer to, to work for a sports agent, and we had a lot of clients in the NFL and 
Um, you know, we were we were helping a lot of guys on the on the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers with different marketing opportunities. Um, but out of the blue, my boss, you know, called me in and said, I'm doing a lot of work for Rick Majerus. Do you know who that is? Of course I knew who he was. And he, he basically said he needs an assistant for the summer um, just to help him with stuff. And do you want to do that? And I thought, of course I want to do that. Um, so I basically got this kind of random side job um, where I would I would meet with Rick Majerus pretty much every day. And I would do everything from, like, helping him move stuff to watering his lawn to um, talking basketball. I mean, it was it was an unbelievable three months. Um, and then, ironically, my, my first real job out of college um, was actually in Salt Lake City, of all places, where he had uh, he had lived for 10-plus years at the University of Utah. Um, and so, you know, man, God works in, in strange ways that way, where, uh, you know, here – he was the first person I called saying, I'm going to take this job. And he gave me a bunch of advice and kind of where to live and who to talk to. Um, but he was an incredible basketball personality. Um, and he just, he loved the game. I mean, if, if there's maybe a, a list of five guys that would just talk basketball, you know, all day long, uh, he would definitely be toward the top of that list. No, definitely. I could tell his passion, passion for the game. I just watched him on TV, uh, coaching Utah. I think he was St. Louis as well, coaching there. So I definitely saw the man, the, the guy's passion. He loved the game of basketball for sure. And I know you mentioned earlier about Brian Wardle. Um, he's been on my show m- multiple times. Me and him are real good, good with each other. You got any good stories about Coach Brian there? Yeah. So I think what, what a lot of people probably forget is Brian was a hell of a player. Um, you know, he's still probably a top 10 all-time leading scorer at Marquette. Um, but what was interesting is he was he was just getting started coaching when I was playing. And so he would play on our scout team. And you know, he was the guy that if we needed a bucket, um, I'm going to Brian. Because um, he, could, he could put it on people. And, you know, man, if, if we lost, he would still run the sprints with us, you know, just like he was on the team. Um, I, just, I loved his mentality. He definitely had... He definitely had that edge um, when it when it came to uh, when it came to scoring points. Um, you know, I think uh, even as a coach, he you know Marquette was in Conference USA at the time I was playing. He still probably could have gone out and gotten twenty at twenty a night um, in that league back in two thousand four. Wow, yeah, I remember that league, Conference USA. It's not what it used to be. I tell you that now. It's what's the American Conference now, but back in the day, it was a little, it was, t- it was a little, a little different than that Conference for sure. And and John, uh, for my listeners out there, man, who want to purchase your book, how can they all purchase your book? And do you have any events coming up where they can come see you in person? Because we're listeners all over. Though we're based out of Atlanta, we're listeners all over because of our global podcast we put out after the show airs here 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 in Atlanta. So. So, our listeners, where can they receive you and, and reach you and, and get you a book, man? Yeah, so uh name of the book, again, is Walk on Warrior. Um, the book's available on Amazon, on barnesandnoble.com. Um, I haven't been doing too many you know, in-person things for the book just because of COVID, but can't wait to kind of get back out there and, and uh, you know, talk with people about the book. Mm-hmm. But um, feel free to hit me up on Twitter um, at John Wilkham and uh, – would love to have people read the book. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I love to talk with people about basketball. I hope it motivates and inspires, you know, people that are looking for um, just a great, authentic basketball story. I mean, I when I wrote that book, I took all the fluff out of it. And, and I, there's nothing in there that would, you know, violate the locker room in any way. Um, you know, you have too much respect for the guys you play with to do that. But I wanted it to be authentic. And I wanted it to come from, you know, this is what actually happened is what you go through, um, and I think people will appreciate that. You know, when they when they dig in. We're gonna have to have you on again, Don. To talk, just talk, just talk ball, man. Because you know, I can I can tell we talked pre-show, man. You 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 about ball. I'm about ball. We both love some ball, man. <laughs> so we definitely gonna have to have you on again to talk ball, man. And if, I, so I kid you not, if you come to Atlanta anytime soon, man, we have to get, get together to have dinner, man, for sure. If you come to town anytime soon. Yeah, I would love to do that. Um, I get down there a little bit uh, for my my current job, and um, you know, once once I can start traveling again, uh, I would love to connect for sure.
Mo, I will text you offline my, my number. So you have my number, man. So you can text me when you get to town, man. But, John, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you reaching out to me as well. I'm glad to do, to do this today with you. Talk about your book because it's inspired me as well because I got some things I, I need to hear from, from, from this book, man. So, John, thank you for again for your time. Be blessed, my friend, and be blessed to your daughter and, you, and your family, man. hope you guys stay safe throughout this COVID crisis, man. Appreciate it, Jack. I super appreciate you having me on. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, I mean, all your listeners, you got a, you got a great show. And you said at the beginning, you know, the fact that you're able to, uh, interact with so many people from so many different walks of life, you know, around, around basketball is awesome. So, uh, best of luck to you guys moving forward. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for your time, brother. Be safe, man. All right, guys. See ya. That's John Wilkham on the Boss Band Show. Get his book today on Amazon and other, other platforms. After the break, Coach Stan Van Gundy joins us to talk NBA after the break. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh. Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you're gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me you could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby, and it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks. Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis.